From the way things go to OK Go, Rube Goldberg devices are everywhere. But who exactly was Rube Goldberg in the first place? Well, find a brick wall to put a foot on for a moment, I'm here to tell ya. Born in San Francisco on July 4, 1883, Ruben Lucius Goldberg took up drawing at the age of four, tracing images from books and magazines. Yet despite his demonstrated love for line drawings, his father felt the cartoons were impractical. He said, son, you should be an engineer. And off Ruben went to the University of California at Berkeley to study engineering. Cause and effect. After graduation in 1904, he went to work for the city of San Francisco designing sewer systems for $100 a month. That would be equivalent to about $2,700 in today's pay, adjusting for the fat hand of inflation. But only six months into the job, feeling depressed and dissatisfied, he left to work for the San Francisco Chronicle to chase his dream of drawing cartoons for a mere $32 per month, $864 by today's standards. At first, Rube's cartoons went unappreciated by the Chronicle, often turning up in the editor's waste paper baskets. But after being assigned to draw athletes during sporting events, the Chronicle noticed that they sold more newspapers when they contained more pictures. So one thing leads to another, and the paper begins a colour cartoon section, finally providing the proper venue for Goldberg's work. Following in the footsteps of other San Francisco journalists who moved to New York to hit the big time, in 1907 Goldberg moved to New York City to draw for the New York Evening Mail and the New York Sun, leading to the national syndication of his works, like Boob McNutt, Mike and Ike They Look Alike, Foolish Questions and Sideshow. But it was Goldberg's Crazy Invention series starring Professor Lucifer Gorgonzola Butts for which he is best remembered. Inspired by his background in engineering and the sewer systems of San Francisco, Goldberg's Professor Butts would create elaborate contraptions to accomplish the most simple tasks in an extraordinarily roundabout manner. And while such machines bear his namesake, his award-winning political cartoons elevated his work from silliness to social commentary. This single-panel comic entitled Peace Today, drawn in 1947, depicts the instability of a nation whose atomic bomb-backed security teeters on the brink of destruction. This cartoon led Goldberg to win the Pulitzer Prize in 1948. And then there's this cartoon, also from World War II, which is kind of racist. The same can be said for World War II cartoons produced by Warner Brothers, Disney, and even Dr. Seuss. The civil rights movement had not yet occurred, and casual racism and political propaganda was commonplace. Anyway, as a Jewish American doing political satire during World War II, Rube received a lot of hate mail and numerous death threats himself. Fearful that his sons, Thomas and George, could be in danger, he insisted that they change their last names. Perhaps inspired by their father's sense of humor, Goldberg's eldest son became Thomas George and the younger George George. To date, each year since its inception in 1946, the National Cartoonist Society, co-founded by Rube Goldberg, presents the Rubin Award to one of the year's most outstanding cartoonists. Artists like Calvin and Hobbes, Bill Waterson, The Far Side's Gary Larson and Doonesbury's Gary Trudeau, to name but a few. Today, when most people look at a self-operating napkin consisting of a parakeet, an alarm clock and a skyrocket, they immediately think of three-dimensional contraptions known as Rube Goldberg machines. I know I do. Good your day, I'm Molly and this is Rocket Boom. Whoa! And this is Rocket Boom Daily. That's Know Your Meme, that's Rocket Boom Tech, and that's Rocket Boom NYC. We're breaking out into our own channels, so don't forget to subscribe to all your favorite shows to stay up to date with all things Rocket Boom.